Everybody, uh, what we're going to be doing today is we have two videos. I just broke it up into a, uh, a warm up and then the actual lesson. Um, so the lesson's pretty long, so make sure you get watching it. Um, just as a quick heads up, uh, what I would like you guys to do at the end of this lesson, so the warm up and lesson, is upload your notes. So that's going to be this warm up and the uh, lesson. Just upload it in one document, it doesn't need to be different. Uh, make sure your homework is uploaded, so make sure 1.4 homework is uploaded. And then we are also going to uh, start, you guys should have time to start, uh, 1.5 um, RSG. I just want to give you guys a heads up, I will be available uh, to answer any homework questions or anything that pertains to this lesson from 2 to 3. So just go to the Google, uh, our Google Classroom, and under the stream you'll see a Google, uh, you'll see a Google Meet uh, link to join, and this will just be an open uh, place to answer any questions from any previous homework assignments or this lesson as well. So let's go and get started. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, solving a handful of matrices. So we're going to look at mostly at multiplication on this one right here, okay? So the first part is, let me just bring up my notes really quickly, is it says uh, on two days a store sold the following amounts of pencils, erasers, and binders. So they broke this up into a two by three matrix. Remember, two rows, three columns. And if the prices for each pencil, eraser, and binder are $0.20, cents, $0.35, cents, and uh, $2.85, how much was made? So I talked about this last lesson. I'm going to repeat it uh, now and in the future lesson. Whenever you are comparing two things or making two matrices, and um, we usually have two things that are related. So in this instance, it's going to be pencils, cost of pencils, erasers, cost of erasers, binders, cost of binders. You want them on opposite sides, meaning one is going to be on the left hand side and one is going to be on the top. Since this first matrix is already given to us, that means the second matrix we are going to have it um, we are going to have it with the items on the left. Excuse me, the cost on the left. So that means I'm going to have the cost of pencils. I'm going to have the cost of erasers. And then I'm going to have the cost of binders. So if we remember that, if we just go ahead and write, write this, I had 20 cents, I had 35 cents, and then I had $2.85. So I have this 3 by 1 matrix. And now what it wants me to do, it wants me to multiply the two matrices. Well, if I have these two matrices that I just filled out, um, my choices here is I start with my original one, which was a 2 by 3, and am I going to have this one on the right side or the left side? And if you remember the previous lesson, we know that when the inside matches, I'm going to get a new answer, which is this column. And it makes sense because I have two days, so I'm going to have two rows, and I'm going to have the total cost for each one. So let's go ahead now and solve this then. I'm going to have my 48, 7, and 9 for Monday. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to have my 54, 10, and 6. And I'm just going to multiply that by this matrix right here. I'm just going to slide it down. And the first thing what I'm going to do, if you guys remember, I'm going to take my first row and multiply it by my one and only column. So this would be then on Monday's total, I'm going to have 48 times 0.2 plus 7 times 0.35. Now I'm going to have plus 9 times $2.85. And when I multiply and add all those up, that will be the total cost for Monday. Um, and then so for Tuesday, I'm going to have 54, same prices, 20 cents plus 10 times 3.5, or 0.35, and then plus 6 times $2.85. So when I do all this then, I should have had values, I'll write it in pink right below. If I simplify this, uh, 9.6, 2.45, Then over here I would have had um, 10.8, 3.5, and 17.1. 
I'm just going to add all those values. So when I add those, I'm going to find the total cost for Monday. Total cost for Monday would be 37.7, and the total cost for Tuesday would be 31.4. There, you're done. Now, guys, just to let you know, on a final final matrix, you technically wouldn't need these uh, labels there. But while we're starting off, it's uh, helpful. All right, old McDonald had a farm, and he also grows peaches, apricots, and plums, and apples. And here's his fruit chart. So he has um, the number of boxes he sold of each fruit. So 10 boxes of peaches, 10 boxes of apricots, 30 boxes, excuse me, 12 boxes of apricots, 30 boxes of plums, and 15 boxes of apples. Now the next thing that it gives us is it gives us the amount of money. Now if you remember, we, which we talked about earlier again, is we need to um, rewrite these matrices in a way where I have peaches, apricots, plums, apples, so the type of fruit on top, and that means the cost of fruit will be on the side. So that means I'm going to have the cost of peaches, the cost of apricots, the cost of plums, and then the cost of apples. Okay, so let's see, the cost of all those would be 27, 15, 34, and 17 a box. And then I have my other matrix. Um, let's see, I have this matrix, which is a 1 by 4, and this matrix, which is a 4 by 1. And now it's kind of strange. Well, it doesn't matter which way I put it. Those 4s match, those 1s match, so which one would it be? Well, you always need to think about what the final question is saying. It's saying, what would the total cost be? Find the total amount of income. Well, the income makes sense if it's a four by four grid, or the total uh, total, or would it make more sense if the total um, income was a one by one grid? And I would say it would make more sense if it was a one by one grid. So that means I am going to have a matrix. Let me go ahead and shrink this down. So we can move them next to each other. So that means I'm going to have my one by one, and I'm going to multiply that by my, or excuse me, my one by four, and multiply that by my four by one. So let's go ahead and look at this. That means I'm just going to do 10 times 27 plus 12 times 15 plus 30 times 34 plus 15 times 17. And when I go ahead and solve that, and then I add those all together, I'll do the multiplication for it first. This would be 270 plus 180 plus 1,020 plus 255. And when I add those all together, I should get 1,725. All right. Um, let's go ahead and jump over in here. We have these matrices, and what we're going to do is figure out if I can actually get a solution. If I can, I'm going to solve them, and if I can't, I'm going to write undefined. So this is a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2. As we talked about, these are the same, and I can multiply these. So we're only going to do two of these. We're going to do three of these. Okay. So looking at these, remember, you're going to take your first row, multiply it by your first column. So this would be 2 times 4, 2 times 4, plus negative 1 times negative 3. Next one, um, which we can do in second row, first column, and I will do that in black. So that would be negative 6 times 4, plus 1 times negative 3. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to their next one. First row, second column. So that would look something like uh, 2 times 4 plus negative 1 times negative 5. And then our final one, last row, second row, second column. So what that would look like then is negative 6 times 4 plus 1 times negative 5. So when I get all these then, guys, and I'm going to solve them, I'm going to get 8 plus 3, which is 11, negative 24, plus negative 3, which is negative 27, uh, 8 plus 5, which is 13, let's see, 8 plus negative 5, okay, just want to make sure I did this one right, 
first row, column, and four. I think I did that right. And the last and uh, final one, we would have negative 24 minus 5, which is negative 29. Hold on, I'm looking at my notes. I just want to make sure this one's correct. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 5. Okay, perfect. And we can solve that one. Next one. This is the first time we've seen this. This is the adding and subtracting of matrices. Now the general rule is whenever you want to add or subtract, dimensions must be the same. And they're much, much, much easier. So really quickly guys, we've already solved a few of these multiplication ones, so I'm just gonna like block this one right here. We're not gonna actually solve it. So we're only, I'm changing the problem so it looks like this. And when I add and subtract these, what you basically do is you take the corresponding spots and you complete the operation. So if I go ahead and just match up my corresponding values, and now I'm going to match up my corresponding values. 5 plus 1 is 6, 3 plus 2 is 5, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, and 2 plus 0 is uh, uh, 2. Now what it wanted us to do after this spot is then multiply it to this one, but like I said, we're just going to save some time. And we're just going to call it a day right here. We're done. Now, same thing. Orders of operations. Can I add and subtract these? Um, you can multiply this. This is a 2 by 2. This is a 2 by 1. And I want you to realize this, guys. Without even solving it, I can multiply these, and I'm going to have an answer that's a 2 row, 1 column. So that's what I just know what it looks like. Can I add that to something that looks like this? Well, no, they're not the same dimensions. You can't, uh, you can't just multiply or leave these blank. You, you're, you're done. There's nothing more you can do here. So this would be actually be undefined. You're done. You can't do anything there. But like this one, similar to the other one, you just complete the operation of what the corresponding values are. And it wants us to add these corresponding values. So right here, all it would look like then is negative 6. Uh, negative 3 plus 6 is 3. Negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6. And 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. So then I'm done. Nothing more for you to do here. So if I wanted to write a, an example of a matrix of multiplication that would be undefined, if I had something like um, 3 times 2, Oops, and then I'm going to multiply that by a number times any value. This number cannot equal 2. So any number that's not 2, it's so like 5. The second number does not matter. It could have been anything. It just helps determine the, the uh, dimensions. So I'm going to say like a 5 times 1. So my two matrix that I could not multiply would look something like this. And it's because these do not match. So in the expression a times b, if a is a 3 times uh, three times 5, then what could be the dimension of b? So it's basically I have two of the values, and this first matrix is going to be 3 by 5. It says, give me an example where I could multiply this. Well, the only thing that really matters is this first row, or this, this blank value right here, needs to be a 5. The second value could be anything, so we'll put like a 2. All right, guys, you just finished the warm-up. Uh, please go ahead and watch the lesson. It's a long one, so go ahead and get started on it. Um, and remember, come see me at 2 to 3 o'clock if you have any questions.